Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our second example of how to find the current in an RL circuit. Not only do we need to find the current through the inductor, we're also being asked to find the voltage across the inductor and the current through the 6 ohm resistor. Notice here that we have a 10 volt voltage supply and we have a switch that closes at t equals zero. So what's happening before the switch closes? What happens when t is less than zero? Well, when t is less than zero, the switch is open, all the current goes to here, to the 3 ohm resistor, to the branch point. Since the inductor will be in a steady state situation, that means then that the inductor no longer opposes the current, because it only opposes a change in the current, the current is not changing, all the current will be going through the inductor, and none of it will be going through the 6 ohm resistor which means that the inductor will act, act like a short and the 6 ohm resistor will act like an open. Redrawing the circuit with this open right here, it'll look as follows. We have the 10 volt voltage supply, we have a 2 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, a short, and back to the voltage source. So 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and that will be the equivalent circuit before time equals zero. Well, then to find the current at that moment, you can say that the current I, which is equal to the voltage divided by the total resistance, the total resistance will be 5 ohms, 10 volts divided by 5 ohms equals 2 amps, which means that before time equals zero, there's a 2 amp current flowing from the voltage supply through the two resistors, through the inductor, and back. So the initial current through the inductor is equal to two amps. So let's go ahead and write that. So the initial current through the inductor, I can write I sub L, is equal to two amps. Now that we know that, let's now go to the situation when the time is after t equals zero. So now we can say that t is greater than zero, that means the switch will have closed and the circuit will look as follows. 10 volt voltage supply, a 2 ohm resistor, short circuit, back to the voltage supply. Now on this side, a 3 ohm resistor, a 6 ohm resistor, and we have an inductor. 6 ohms, so, and this is a 2, two Henry ohms. inductor. All right, notice once we close the switch here, any current coming out of the 10 volt voltage supply will go through the 2 ohm resistor, but then will follow the short circuit path back to the voltage supply and none of the current coming from here will go to this part of the circuit. Which means that this part of the circuit can now be drawn as an equivalent circuit. So what, let's go ahead and do that. The equivalent circuit will now look like this relative to the inductor. So we have a 3 ohm, a 6 ohm, and a 2 Henry inductor. So that's the equivalent circuit. Notice that if we want to go one step farther and combine those two resistors, notice that these two resistors are in parallel relative to this inductor. So this can now be written as, or at least drawn as, a single resistor with a single inductor. The equivalent resistance in this case would be the sum of those two, but remember those are in parallel, so it would be the product over the sum, 18 divided by 9, which means 2 ohms is the equivalent resistance here, 2 henrys is the inductance, which means that the time constant being L over R equals 2 henrys divided by 2 ohms equals 1 second. We know the initial current, we know the time constant, from that we should be able to draw the equation that determines the current through the inductor after t equals 0. That means that I is a function of time, which is equal to the initial current as t equals zero. So that would be t equal to zero times e to the minus t over tau. And so this is equal to two amps of initial current times e to the minus t over one, or we simply can write this as two amps times e to the minus t. And that's the current through the inductor after time equals zero. Okay, a couple more things that we need to find. We need to find the voltage across the inductor and the current through the six ohm resistor. All right, 
So let's find the voltage across the inductor. We know that the voltage across an inductor is equal to L times the IDT. So from that, we can say, therefore, that the voltage across the inductor is equal to L. Well, L is equal to one second. Oh, I'm sorry. L is equal to two Henry's. Two Henry's multiplied times the DDT of the current. And the current is equal to, right here, two amps times e to the minus t. When we take the derivative of that, so this would be equal to, that would be two times two, that would be four, and that would be volts times e to the minus t times the derivative of the exponent, which is a negative one, which means that this is equal to a minus four volts times e to the minus t. And that would be the voltage across the inductor as a function of time. Finally, we're now ready to find the current through the 6 ohm resistor. Notice, using Ohm's law, that the current through the 6 ohm resistor as a function of time is equal to the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor as a function of time divided by the resistance, of course, that would be the 6 ohm resistance, the resistor. But the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor must be equal to the voltage across the inductor because those two branches are in parallel. And the voltage across the inductor is this voltage right here, which means that this is equal to minus 4 volts times e to the minus t divided by the 6 ohms. And therefore, the current I to the 6 ohm resistor would be equal to minus 2 thirds amps multiply times e to the minus t. And that's how we also find the current through that resistor. The approach is the same. We look at the circuit before the switch is closed. We realize that this will become an, a short circuit. This will become an open circuit. We redraw the equivalent circuit to find the initial current flowing through the inductor. After the switch is closed, this becomes a short circuit. All the current from the Voltage supply will be short-circuited through here, will not go through the inductor. This can then be drawn as an equivalent circuit and then even reduced even further to find the equivalent resistance. From that, we find the time constant. Once we know the time constant and the initial current to the inductor, we can find the current as a function of time to the inductor. Then we can find the voltage across the inductor by realizing that it's the inductance times the change with respect to time of the current. And then finally, we can find the current to the 6 ohm resistor, realizing that the voltage across these two branches has to be exactly the same. And that's how it's done.